Good evening, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of 1 Corinthians 4, no, 1 Corinthians, this is chapter 4, verse 15. This is for people who think they need, well, you know, other instructors are okay, depending on where they're coming from, but you only need Christ and the Holy Spirit. It says, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. That's a good verse. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. That's how we're saved, why we're saved, and how we're kept saved through his death, burial, and resurrection. His blood is what cleanses us. It is grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his blood, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, and change you if you let him. So this article came out on election day. And according to New York Prepper, things are happening. So Russia launched a, I think it's Soyuz rocket early on Tuesday, carrying two satellites designed to monitor the space weather around Earth and 53 small satellites, including two Iranian ones. Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency said. Now, I said that they were going to launch, eventually launch, try to launch an EMP. Well, this could be what's, what, maybe the U.S. told them to do this. That's the only playing card they got before Trump gets in office. Talking to the U.S. So they launched basically is what I'm hearing. They launched the EMP, possible. So it says that um, the launch spacecraft is called, the, I think it's Soyuz 2.1 launch spacecraft, which lifted off from Russia's Cosmodrome, carried two uh, M satellites. They could care less about the weather which will become part of the space system for monitoring the Earth's ion, ionosphere, the agency said, or some BS like that. If you believe that, <laughs> yeah. The ionosphere where Earth's atmosphere meets space stretches roughly 50 to 400 miles above Earth's surface according to information provided on NASA's website. So, each satellite weighs about 948 pounds. And its working orbit is an altitude of about 510 miles, according to the Interfax News Agency. Why did they wait until Election Day to do this? The system will include a total of four Inosfera M satellites. The next two devices are planned to be launched in 2025. Among the 53 small satellites, two Iranian satellites. Isn't that special? The Kalsar, a high-resolution imaging satellite, and... I think it's Hudhad, 
a small communication satellite, as well as the first Russian-Chinese student satellite. Russia in February launched into space an Iranian research satellite that will scan Iran's topography from orbit, Iran stated in media and in the media and reported at that time. Why did they do this now on election day? Did someone give them the go-ahead to do this? Because like I said, this is the only thing the Democrats have to do now. Is This is the only playing card they have. They did not expect the results to be what they did. And therefore, they've lost power. Along with their collective minds. Yeah, they have lost that. Because now you got people, uh, well, reacting rash, I should say. Yeah. So what's going on with this? Is this a possible EMP? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Not just for Israel. But it could be for the U.S. Remember, Iran said, well, we're not just including Israel with this. We're including the U.S. So... That's what they're doing. Now, again, they did it. I, this article came out November 5th, election day. And we're just now hearing about it now. So, like I said, something's going on. Of course, something is definitely going on. Now, let me give you this that came out this morning on RT. Ryakov from Russia. Ro Moscow reiterates threat to server diplomatic ties with the U.S. This isn't for Trump. This is geared towards the Biden administration. So Moscow could server diplomatic relations with Washington if the latter persists in the in its hostile policies towards Russia. Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryevkov warned in an interview with the news outlet published today. The diplomat said that any steps the U.S. takes that could escalate the Ukraine conflict may justify a rupturing of ties. Now they just sent over. I think of what, what did they approve? Something like six million or six billion dollars more to Ukraine or something like that. They're trying to push out all the money they can before this man gets in office. They're going to do as much damage as they possibly can before Trump takes, takes the stand, before he gets in. And they're going to make it so that it can't be reversed. This is why that EMP thing that Russia just launched or Iran just launched, it's, it's probably true. It's probably true. It's probably an EMP. Sure. I had mentioned something like this last year. Iran has a lot of satellites and all they have to do is flip a switch. This past June, Rayakob warned that Washington's increasingly hawkish posture towards Russia was making any diplomat any diplomatic contacts practically impossible. When asked to clarify this uh, position, he told uh, the media that while there was no scenario that would make Russia automatically cut ties with the West, but that this option is undoubtedly on the table. We never take escalatory steps of this kind without provocation, but I admit to the possibility of this action if, in an attempt to put pressure on us, the, white, uh, the West throws away the last shreds of decency. When asked what U.S. actions could make Russia... 
further downgrade ties, he mentioned U.S. attempts to confiscate Russia's frozen assets, as well as dramatic and further escalatory actions leading to a worsening of the situation on the conflict on the contact line in Ukraine. He noted that there are a number of uh, plots that the West continues to discuss that could escalate the conflict. For instance, Kiev has for months been pushing the U.S. and its allies to lift the ban on strikes deep inside Russia with Western-supplied long-range weapons. Some within the Western group discuss these plans But some do it with a certain trepidation, understanding how all this could end for them. The diplomat noted that it is currently difficult to predict how U.S.-Russia relations will unfold in view of the election with Donald Trump. Some analysts have predicted a thaw in relations due to Trump's repeated pledges to bring a shift in, to bring a swift end to the Ukraine conflict. Ryakov, however, said that while promises and signals made by Trump are important, Moscow will await his specific actions before making assessments of his policy. So bilateral relations between Russia and the U.S. have been deteriorating since 2014, when a Western-backed coup led to a conflict in the Ukrainian region of Donbass and Crimea reunification with Russia. Now, who was in office in 2014? Hmm. Yeah, he fled. I give you a hint. He just fled the country. Yeah. Relations further worsened when the Ukraine conflict escalated in February of 2022, at which point West slapped Russia with more sanctions and supplied Kiev regime with economic and military aid. I'll say it again. I, say, I said it before. Um, Things are happening. For Greg on New York Prepper to come on and say that this that this EMP thing has uh, that I ran to launch this thing is uh, it's pretty significant because, quite frankly, like I said, I believe it. This just came to me. Someone just sent this. Now, this is interesting. This came to me off of X post. And it says, Putin says Russia is not conducting de-dollarization policies. It says, we continue to conduct settlements in dollars. It says, we were kicked out of dollar settlements. Hmm. Well, guys, this is one of those wait and see moments. <laughs> We're going to wait and see what happens, especially with this um, so-called uh, EMP. We will wait and see what happens. They couldn't have did this without the help of Russia. There have been a series of small quakes that have been happening for the last week or two. With no aftershocks. None of that. And I had said either they're testing something or something is going on. Now this comes out with this. So we will see what happens. And then Russia tells Biden administration, well, you keep it up. We're going to cut ties with you, so... We'll see what happens. I have to admit, it is exciting. That's putting it mildly. I will link this in the description box if anything else comes up. I will be back. Thank you.